Earth Rise, December 24th, 1968. Apollo 8 went to the moon and discovered Earth. This is a photo that they took by accident on returning from the moon. The Earth seen for the first time as nature intended it, without borders, without nations, without countries, as one living planet. Shortly after seeing this, our thinking began to change. We changed our actions, and in 1970, we created the, the uh, <clears throat> Comprehensive Clean Air Act. In 1970, we also created Earth Day. The Environmental Protection Agency was founded. 1971, Doctors Without Borders was formed. Who even thought about that? Doctors Without Borders. The Clean Water Act was founded. Endangered Species Act. 1972, DDT insecticide was banned by the FDA. 1973, the catalytic converter was created. America was still at war. And there was campus unrest worldwide, protests. Unleaded gas was created. Humanity began reacting to this Earthrise image, changing to a new global perspective that we are all on one planet. Just as a reminder, the technology and innovations that we had to go to the moon was much less than we carry around in our pockets on our smartphones. Another reminder is we were in this space race to the moon because of fear. We feared that the Soviets would gain the upper hand with their Sputnik rocket. And so the space race was started to get us to the moon. Nature. Others call me Mother Nature. I've been here for over four and a half billion years, 22,500 times longer than you. I don't really need people, but people need me. Yes, your future depends on me. When I thrive, you thrive. When I falter, you falter. Or worse. But I've been here for eons. I have fed species greater than you, and I have starved species greater than you. My oceans, my soil, my flowing streams, my forests, they all can take you or leave you. How you choose to live each day, whether you regard or disregard me, doesn't really matter to me. One way or the other, your actions will determine your fate, not mine. I am nature. I will go on. I am prepared to evolve. Are you? I am extremely optimistic and believe that we are prepared to evolve and adapt. Let me tell you why I believe so. 2015 was a pivotal year for the entire earth. I'm going to kind of synapse what happened. 
There were extreme conditions, the hottest months on record in all of history, polar caps melting, major flooding, and extreme droughts. I guess climate reality and Al Gore were not so crazy after all. Leonardo DiCaprio addressed the United Nations and donated $15 million for climate changes and causes. 32 million climate refugees in 2015 were displaced. The World Expo in Milan, Italy, 184 days with the theme, Feeding the Planet, Energy for Life. On November 29th, a breakthrough energy coalition to accelerate the use of clean energy was started by 20 billionaires. Among them were Mark Zuckerberg and Bill Gates. On November 30th, the COP, number 21, Conference of the Parties in Paris, here, the world came together. The globe came together with an agreement and a roadmap for the future of climate change. November, Volkswagen, 11 million affected cars cheating on emissions. NASA receives $19.8 billion for their 2016 budget, and the new space race begins. The privatization of space, Virgin Galactic and Sir Richard Branson, SpaceX and Elon Musk, Blue Origin with Jeff Bezos, all with successful rocket launches in 2015. And this image is the last. December 2015, the Lunar Orbiter gives us this new Earthrise photo. Again, a little bigger, a little bit crisper, our one planet living without borders, without nations as one planet. What does this mean? It means that we're entering to a new race for our home, for our earth, and for humanity. It's the truly the global era of sustainability. What are we racing against? We have stepped back and taken a global view of the earth to find out what are the major problems affecting us, what is causing our climate change, what are we fighting against? And the clear answer is that there are many compounding facets affecting us, energy, resources, health, waste, they are all parts that contribute to this whole issue. There are many more than six global grand challenges, but we have chosen six specifically tied to a specific industry that address all sorts of challenges at one time, not each individually. We have removed the blinders and are addressing the following that you see on this slide. Health, energy, water, food, disaster resilience, and environment. We looked at the earth as a whole and asked the question, where are the largest impacts to climate change coming from? The answer is that there are many factors and industries that affect, create, and contribute to the problem. But the data and analysis show that the food and beverage industry will and continue to be the major contributor, negative contributor, in all facets. If the industry does not change now and switch to renewable energy, we will all be in trouble. In 2015, KPMG released a report, a worldwide report, one of many reports that came out. This one speaks about climate and environmental impact and cost. The food and beverage industry has the largest imbalance 
with an EBITDA of 89 billion US dollars with a total environmental cost as percentage of EBITDA at 224%. For those statisticians in the audience, um, the real key is the imbalance, 224%. As Peter Diamandis has said many times, the world's biggest problems are also the world's biggest opportunities. We are well aware of the opportunities and the potential for profits, but are truly focused on global solutions for a better future. These are that we change from the industrial age to an inclusive and sustainable industrial development, meaning we have a passion for our planet and our humanity and that is why jointly we have cre created a complete system to address all these challenges in one system. To bring the entire globe up and the entire industry up to the sweet spot of innovation and technology. Some of these technologies have existed for, for years and are not being applied. This system uh, envelops three things, one planet living, cradle to cradle, and the circular economy. It addresses many facets, the biological cycle or organic cycle, and the technical cycle. It talks about flowing things that you create back into the circle instead of having waste. If you have windows or parts that are technical, computer parts, that they all flow back into the system and are reused, that nothing is wasted or thrown away. One thing may be unclear, and I want to, uh, I, I'm very proud of France, the first country in the world's history to pass a law to grocery store chains that food cannot be wasted. It needs to be donated first. It needs to be given away first before thrown away. And I commend you all on being part of a wonderful uh, effort for that. My company has created technology, innovation, renewable energy, and resources in one system. We use solar and wind power with green roofs and hydrogen to produce renewable energy that we use to run our full production facility. We not only generate our own energy, but then we, we save it to Tesla power packs so that we're not only generating, but we're also storing it until we use it. We also use vertical farming and a water management system. We recycle 100% rainwater. We filter with reverse osmosis. We filter and, and clean and, and process our own gray water and our wastewater. Our vertical farming runs off a nutritional film technology off of 100% rainwater, producing 12 different types of plants. Um, that's also produced fully off of 100% renewable energy. We have given way too much trust to the food and beverage industry. We have allowed them to choose what type of products they create for us, what kind of sugars, preservatives, conservatives, aromas, and many other things go into our, our food that we consume every day. This trust needs to be taken back. The choice is ours. Sustainability is all about choices, about what kind of energy you use, but that it is sustainable. Renewable energy is a major choice, and last year was pivotal, pivotal to show that the price was reduced more affordable than fossil fuels in some areas. And lastly, the big question that always comes, you can't find the, fight the big food and beverage industry, so what can I do as a small person living on campus or at home um, to help? Well, first, know the true cost of the products you buy. And what that means is the true cost of your product is how much water does it take to grow that banana or those nuts? 
What is the farmer's wage that they get for the bananas and nuts? What is the packaging, the transportation? Let's say, for example, you buy a kilogram of bananas for 18 cents. That, in my opinion, would not be a fair or true cost of the product, let alone the water that goes into that, the harvesting time, the shipping time, and the energy. Don't buy products just because they're cheap and you're on a budget. Buy them because you know the true cost. I personally love cashews. Have you ever thrown a, a handful of cashews in your mouth? That's one tree. And you bought it for what? One euro, two euros? The time to harvest, the water needed, where that grows, the size of the fruit, all need to be considered. Buy fair products, fair trade, fair wages, and fair production. Buy used or secondhand products. A lot of our products today have built in obsolescence so that we always need to get the next version. Companies are coming up to speed with that now. Buy local or regional products, walk, bike, or use public transportation. And the biggest part is to plan ahead. When you go out, pack your own lunch, take your own bag, take your own water bottle or a bottle with you that you can refill instead of having to buy plastic, instead of having to buy something else. Use water efficiently and reduce the consumption of animal products. The industry throws away 30% of every item produced. In the food and beverage industry, 30% in the whole world is thrown away and never makes it to a plate. There's many factors and reasons for this, but this means that the water was wasted, the transport was wasted, the marketing was wasted, everything was wasted. Let's not waste anymore. I would ask you to join me as an early adapter because billions of early adapters are needed in the new global era of sustainability. Thank you.